Hello, for this video we are looking for the centroid of the shape shown below uh, and we're going to be using the method of composite parts to find this centroid. So our shape here uh, is a, a hemisphere or you know half of a sphere. Uh, it's going to be solid on top of what's basically a hollowed out cylinder. Um, so the outside diameter of this hollowed out cylinder is going to be uh, three inches and the uh, hollowed out area in the middle has a diameter of two inches. And that's going to go all the way through the cylinder but not into the hemisphere. So <clears throat> with the method of composite parts we need to first break this piece down into uh, parts that we can look up in our table. Uh, so with this I've got three parts that I ended up choosing. Uh, I'm going to have part one be the hemisphere on the top of my piece. Uh, part two is going to be this cylinder with a diameter of three inches and a height of three inches. And then part three is actually my cutout. So I've got another cylinder, uh, part three right here, that's going to be the cutout piece. Uh, so since part three is a cutout, I'm going to count that as a negative volume in my calculations. So now that I've identified my pieces, I've got the hemisphere, uh, part two is the solid cylinder, and then part three is the cylindrical cutout, uh, I can start figuring out my different values. Um, so I've got, let's make my table. Uh, for this, I have my shape. This is going to be one, two, and three. Um, for each of these, for my centroid, I'm going to need to know the volume. And I'm going to need to know the x bar. So this is the x coordinate for the centroid for each of those shapes. The y bar. And the z bar. So x, y, and z coordinates of the centroid for each shape. Uh, so let's start with <clears throat> the volumes. So for a hemisphere, uh, looking uh, here, uh, my hemisphere uh, is going to be half of a sphere. So the volume of a sphere is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, so half a sphere is going to be 2 thirds pi r cubed. So if I do, um, <clears throat> if I find my radius, uh, my diameter of the cylinder and the hemisphere both is 3 inches, so my radius is going to be 1.5 inches. Uh, if I do 2 thirds times 1.5 inches cubed um, times pi, uh, I end up with a volume of roughly 7.07 uh, inches cubed. So that's the volume of my hemisphere. Uh, next I've got the cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is going to be pi r squared times h. Uh, so part two has got a, this is a cylinder with a diameter of three inches, so my radius is again 1.5 inches. So pi times 1.5 inches squared times my height of three inches for my cylinder. Uh, and for this one I end up with a volume uh, of approximately 21.2 inches cubed. Uh, and the last one is going to be my cutout. So again, uh, this is going to be a cylindrical cutout, so my radius went from 1.5 inches, where the diameter was 3, now I've got a diameter of 2 inches, so my radius is 1 inch, uh, pi times 1 squared times my height of 3 inches, um, that's going to give me a value of 9.42 9 inches cubed. And again, since this is a cutout, I count this as a negative volume. All right, now we need to find x bar, y bar, and z bar for each of my uh, pieces. So <clears throat> for this, I'm going to need to look at tables. And so if you look at the centroid table, you should be able to find uh, some diagrams like this. So the centroid. Uh, for the hemisphere, it's going to be uh, right down the center, right down the z-axis. So x bar equals zero, y bar equals zero. Uh, same thing for the cylinders. 
Um, so since everything is kind of centered on my z-axis like this, uh, I know that my x-bar values and my y-bar values for the hemisphere and for both of the cylinders are going to be equal to zero. So that makes things pretty easy early on. It's going to be zero, zero, zero for the x-bar values and zero, zero, zero for the y-bar values. Uh, the one that's a little more complicated is going to be my calculations for the z. So again, let's go back. Uh, so I'm going to look first at my hemisphere. Uh, so for the hemisphere, uh, it says z-bar. Uh, this is going from the origin in this diagram is at the base, um, so the, where the center of the sphere would be. Uh, and I go up 3 eighths times the radius. So my radius is 1.5. Um, so I'm going to go up 3 eighths times 1.5 from the base. Uh, in my original diagram, I'm going up from the base by 3 eighths times 1.5. Uh, and I originally, to even get to the base, I first need to go up 3 inches, and then I go an additional 3 eighths times r up. So my z-bar value uh, ends up being equal to 3.56 inches. And again, that's going to be equal to the original 3 inches to go from my origin point up to the base of the sphere, and then I go 3 eighths times the radius, 1.5, up further. So 3 plus 3 eighths times my radius of 1.5. All right. Now I've got my cylinder, so I need to find the z-bar value for the cylinder. And for the cylinder, it's actually pretty simple. Um, so the centroid coordinate is right in the center. It's at h over 2. So I go halfway up the height. Um, so my overall height is 3 inches, uh, and the origin on this diagram lines up with the origin there, so I can really just do one half of the height. So one half of 3 inches is 1.5 inches. So I've got 1.5, and for my cutout it's the same deal. Uh, my radius has changed, but the height hasn't, and the orientation of this hasn't changed. So. My cutout also has a z-bar value of 1.5 inches. All right, so there is my table. Uh, the next thing I need to do uh, is to find my x-bar, y-bar, and z-bar values. Um, and <clears throat> x-bar and y-bar are pretty easy. So whenever you have a column that's all the same, so in this case it's all zeros, that's going to be the centroid coordinate. So I know x-bar and it's going to be equal to zero uh, before I really even do any calculations. Same thing with y bar, zero, zero, zero. So if all of the individual parts have a centroid at zero, the overall shape is going to have a centroid at y equals zero. The one that's not the same is the z bar value. So now I need to do the method of composite parts. So I'm going to do z bar is equal to volume 1 times z bar 1, so 7.07 .07 times 3.56 plus volume 2 times z bar 2, so 21.2 times 1.5 times volume 3 times z bar 3. So this is a negative volume because remember it's a cutout. So I've got negative 9.42 times my z bar value of 1.5. I'm going to divide this whole thing by my overall volume. So my overall volume is just the sum of this column, 7.07 .07 plus 21.2 minus 9.42. And so here I've got a bunch of math. If I solve this whole thing out, I should end up with a z-bar value of 2.27 And my original units were all in inches, 
So the units here are going to be inches as well. All right, so what does that mean? I've got x bar equals zero, y bar equals zero, z bar is 2.27. The centroid of this shape uh, is going to be x equals zero, y equals zero, z equals 2.27. So I go up in the z direction, 2.27 inches. Uh, and so with that, I've located my centroid point. Uh, and I've solved my problem. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.